James Darby is my name. I'm with Stop the Mosque. Stop the Mosque is a organisation which uh, has a name that uh, represents itself. I have the pleasure today of being with Zahi. Zahi was a right. real treat to meet you, and, and a heartbreaking experience for me as well. Um, when you told me that uh, there's no Christians left alive in Mosul, Mosul's the place of your birth. Right. So. About uh, Zahi, uh, it's important for everyone to realise that uh, Zahi is the actual nephew of the past uh, Archbishop of Mosul, uh, now in exile. When I say past, he's still with us. His uh, name is Archbishop Nona, and he is uh, in exile and was the Archbishop of Mosul. Mosul was the place of Zahi's birth. Uh, we've got quite a few questions to go through, uh, Zahi, but I'd like you to tell me about Iraq, northern Iraq, and uh, I'd like you to tell me, it was once known as the cradle of civilization, yeah. the Tigris and the Euphrates, yeah. uh, Babylon, yeah. the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and I believe in uh, early 600, Muhammad's son-in-law, the Lecout did uh, a huge invasion. Yeah. Tell me what happened next. What's, what happened? Well, basically what happened there is what I suppose ISIS is doing right now, which is a complete genocide. They massacred thousands and thousands of... Uh, it's not only the actual number. Some say it's up to a million Christians. Uh, and they So Iraq originally, or Mesopotamia as it was known then. Yeah, I mean, we're the indigenous people of that country, you know, which is why it's such a tragedy what's happening now. Over there, you know, but back then, you know, they came in, they massacred in six hundred. Yeah, so many Christians. Uh, they also forced so many that are Muslim today to convert, you know, their ancestors. So if you go back to their family trees, the majority of their ancestors were Christians. They were forced to convert by the by the sword. And where where the jumping uh, eight hundred years? Yeah. Uh, where, what's happening there now? What's happening in northern Iraq now? Well, it's a complete genocide. I mean, a lot of our, us, you know, Iraqi Christians have been screaming for some sort of, you know, we've got the hashtag demand for action, save our Christians, all kinds of different online campaigns uh, to, I suppose, make the governments accountable and to step in because it's 2014 or 2015 now. And the same thing is happening there that happened 1,500 years ago. You know, they're getting... There's so many beheadings on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, the city where I was born in, which is Mosul, uh, was cleansed, so to speak, of uh, Christians. They gave them the option to either convert to Islam, uh, pay a tax to stay there, uh, beheaded, or leave. And those were the options that were given to them. And so, obviously, uh, there was a mass, uh, you know, flee, flee of all the uh, Christians there. The French president <coughs> mentioned the other day that... ISIS, ISIS or ISIL, yep. or IS, yep. are not part of the religion of Islam. And that's rubbish. Why would he say such a thing? Well, I mean, I suppose he might think of Islam as, you know, there are moderate Muslims obviously that live by this way. You know, there's a good, I suppose, I don't know, it's around 70% of Muslims that don't follow this, this practice. But there's still a good 20 to 30% that do. Because it, it's, it's, it's in the Quran that states that they can perform acts as they, as they do. Is it recognised by anyone that anyone in ISIL, is ISIL a correct way of describing it or is it ISIS? Oh, I mean, they're called IS, Islamic State, ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. There's, there's a few. I, I just call is it any, any one of those people in, that, in those groups who is not a Muslim? No, of course not. Their leader has a PhD in Islam. A PhD Islam, in Islam, Islam, Islam studies, yeah. So that would have to make him a Muslim, wouldn't it? I'd say so. So when we see Australian media and the French president saying that uh, Islam is a religion of peace, mm. it's not a fact, is it? No, I mean there is a lot of Muslims that live it, live by peace, but simply because really they haven't taken up, they haven't followed the example. Correct. Of Muhammad. Mm. Is there anything that these people are doing now with their head taking and their forced conversion? That is not that was not done by the original founder of Islam. No, it's all it's it's like a complete replay of it all, and history is repeating itself. Yeah. What can we do? It to happened, sorry, it happened a hundred years ago as well. The Turks 
to the exact same thing. In Armenia? In, in Iraq, another genocide, albeit Syrians, which is Christian Iraqis were forced out, mass murders, beheadings, all that sort of stuff. By the Turks? Yeah, selling of sex slaves. Yeah. You know, they got the Christian women and the Zidi women. That's what they're doing right now in Mosul as well. They've taken the ones that they've captured and they're selling them off as sex slaves too. Was that what the Turkish invasion of Armenia was about as well? Yeah. And the world sort of thinks it's not that at all. Yeah. Well, that's just a fact. It's sort of living with a serious enemy, isn't it? Mm. So, what would you like to see take place now, uh, firstly in Iraq and secondly in Australia? Well, you know, Iraq, there has to be, we've been screaming for a, to have a safe haven for uh, the people of Nineveh, which is the, the Christian Iraqis. Just to have a safe haven. Can you say the name again? Nineveh. Nineveh. Yeah, Nineveh. Yeah, yeah that's, that's where we're originally from, you know, the northern part of Iraq. Uh, they just want to have a safe haven for them so that, you know, they, they're secure. And they, a lot of them, I mean, obviously thousands, hundreds of thousands of, you know, left Iraq, the Christians, but there's a lot that want to stay there. You know, it's their land. It's, they're the indigenous, indigenous people of that. So they just want to know that they're safe. They want to be given arms to protect themselves, you know, instead of giving them to all the Kurds. They want to actually have, you know, um, actual a way to defend themselves as well, just to feel safe in the area. Well, many of the Kurds still were Christians, weren't they? No, they were not. All the Kurds? The majority of them, yeah. Originally they were, though. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about the situation in Australia? And how should the Australian government react to it? Well, the Australian government needs to, obviously... Um, I mean, you can, look at, you can look online, there's a fellow called Brother Rashid. Brother speaks, Rashid. Rashid, yeah. He speaks brilliantly Rashid. about what's going on with ISIS. Uh, and you know why they're doing what they're doing. There's a video called um, "A Message to President Obama." A message to President Obama. Yeah, it's a YouTube video, brilliant. He just explains exactly what ISIS are doing, why they're doing it. He's a former Muslim, isn't he? Yeah, former yes. Muslim, turned Christian. Um, and he talks about it. it's a brilliant video to watch. But yes. it, it explains in detail what they're doing, why they've done it. That video, as it happens, is uh, available as we speak on Stop the Mosque. Yeah, it's on the top of the Stop the Mosque page. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that explains what, you know, their, I suppose, their intent is. And in Australia, I mean, look, what happened with that siege the other day in Sydney, for example, uh, it's a tragedy, but they need to go to the source of that. You know, where was that guy hanging out? What mosques? You know, who were the people that influenced him to, to be that way? They need to be able to go to those people and stamp them out. The, the same sort of response to him was given by the French, rep, by the French president in, in response to the uh, episode that took place in, in France, where everybody seemed to say in the media, or many people in the media seemed to say, uh, Monas is a lone wolf, he's not really a Muslim. Yeah, of course. No, that's what they would let us, far from the truth. Far from the truth. I mean, look, in Sydney I know of uh, um, when there was a protest, and it was a peaceful protest by Christian Iraqis in Sydney, you know, to stop this genocide, to have safe haven for the, there was uh, Muslims showed up at, outside the church, you know, throwing out threats, saying they're going to blow up the church, all that kind of stuff. I mean, is that another lone soldier? Like, there is plenty of these people here in Australia that have got the exact same attitude. Mm -hmm. how, how were you in the, when you left uh, Iraq? Uh, seven. Seven. You still remember? Yeah. yeah. And the circumstances that forced you to leave, what were they? Um, well, I mean, you know, you always get persecuted. For being a Christian over there, but uh, thanks to me, my father got a scholarship to do his uh, PhD out here, so that's why we came here originally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would want you to feel free to tell me anything you feel the uh, the uh, anything you feel that uh, the viewers will want to know. Uh, we'll have a quick coffee and we'll come back. Okay.